Welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about properties of parallelograms. So let's start with the definition of a parallelogram, which is a quadrilateral where both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So on our picture, that looks like this using our arrow symbols there. So that's our definition, short and sweet. Two pairs of parallel sides. Now, along with the definition, we also have some properties of parallelograms, and this is where we get into all that good stuff about parallelograms. Here we have the first one, both pairs of opposite sides have to be congruent. So, on our diagram, we can mark our opposite sides with our dash symbol, which symbols, uh, symbolizes congruence. Right, next property, both pairs of opposite angles have to be congruent as well. So using our angle symbols, we're going to mark those on our diagram so we can see what that looks like. Right, third one, consecutive pairs of angles have to be supplementary. So uh, let's talk about what the word consecutive means. Consecutive means angles that are um, next in line or next to each other kind of. So if we look at this picture, if we have 100 degrees here, there's two angles that are consecutive to it. The angle that's next to it over here, which again, if it has to be supplementary, that's going to be 80. But also the, the angle that's on the other side of 100 up here is also consecutive. So you want to make sure both of those consecutive angles are supplementary. All right, and then the last one, the fourth property, is that diagonals bisect each other. So if we draw our diagonals here, if diagonals bisect each other, that means that these two pieces are going to be congruent. Bisect means cut in half. And these two pieces are also going to be congruent. Now, before we move on, I want to make sure you understand the difference between the definition of a parallelogram and the properties of parallelograms. And it's really important that you understand the difference because when we're doing proofs about parallelograms and we have to state our reasons, it's really important that we use the definition correctly or the properties correctly. So definition is only that we have parallel sides. All the other good stuff comes from the properties. So be careful about that. All right, so let's look at our next example, which is explain why it is impossible for each figure to be a parallelogram. So let's think about our definition, our properties, and look, and it looks like this one, if we look at those opposite angles, well, we know that in a parallelogram, opposite angles have to be congruent. These ones are not congruent, which is why it's impossible for that to be a parallelogram. All right, the next one, if we look, these opposite sides, same kind of thing. The opposite sides are supposed to be congruent, but these ones aren't. So not congruent is why it's impossible. And then here we have two consecutive angles. I'm going to use my symbols and some abbreviations here. And consecutive angles have to be supplementary. Well, if I add 80 plus 95, I get 175 degrees, which is not 180. So consecutive angles are not supplementary in this figure. So it's not a parallelogram. All right, uh, last example. Let's look at this one. We have given to us that UVWX is a parallelogram. So it's telling us in the, def or in the instructions of the example that it's a parallelogram. We can assume everything we know now about parallelograms for this shape. All right, so A says if x u is 15 and u w is 28. So I'm marking my diagram with this information so that it's easier for me to really see what's going on. It's important that you do this. All right, then WZ, so let's look at our diagram. Where is WZ? It's right here. So think about your properties. We know that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other, so we'll want to cut that in half. And we've got WZ is going to be 14. All right, uh, next one, we have if the measure of VWX, which is this one here, is 120 degrees, then the measure of WXU, this one, is the one we have to find. So again, using that diagram and drawing on it helps us figure out what we're looking at. 
So these two angles are consecutive angles, and we know from our properties that they should be supplementary, which means this has to be 60 degrees in order for those to add up to 180. All right, and uh, C, we have if the measure of UVW, which is this one here, is 55 degrees, and VWX is 7X minus 8, then we have to find x. So now we're applying our properties of consecutive angles here in order to find x. So we know consecutive angles are supplementary in parallelograms. So here we go. We add them together. We set it equal to 180 degrees because they're supplementary. And then we finish our problem. So 47 plus 7x is 180 degrees. If I subtract my 47, I have 7x is 133 degrees, and dividing by 7 gives me 19. All right, and there is the rest of that example. And that concludes our lesson on parallelograms. So thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.